Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Tyler and this is Art Hub The Collective's channel. Um, we're gonna do something new and fun today. Can you guess what it is? <laughs> so, like I said in my last video, I am toying with all sorts of different ways to create more engaging content. And one of these ways, we're gonna give it a good old college try is doing my makeup while telling a crazy art history story. We're gonna give it a go. We're gonna see how it is. So today we are talking about somebody super eccentric, super chaotic, exotic, troublesome, but also pretty genius in a strange way. Or maybe he's just a madman. I think that's just the debate of his whole career, his artistic career, and maybe even his personal life. Is, is he kind of crazy? Like, is something... We're talking about Chris Burden, and I'm super excited to finally do this video. I've been wanting to talk about Chris for a long time. Um, Chris was one of the artists that popped up to me first when I was, you know, was first starting to want to make videos. He was one of the first artists and I did not know about him until I started researching artists, crazy art stories. You know what I mean? So this was super cool. Um, also, we are going to ignore the shadow, okay? We're going to ignore the shadow. I am still working on a background, on a setup. We're getting there. It's okay. So, Chris. Oh, man. Christopher, Christopher Lee Burden, I believe is his full name, was born in April uh, 1946. And Chris, at the age of 12, had a very traumatic strange there were there are not a lot of records out there of what happened to him but it was some kind of accident with his foot so he goes to the hospital with his parents and there is no anesthesia to be given so he goes through a very horrible i'm supposing painful um procedure without any anesthesia and I don't know if like if y'all are just a super boss like that but I I don't think I could have done that I really don't no anesthesia no nothing no that is important because it sets the stage for his whole art career and what he is known for which is performative art and in whole Chris is a lot of things was a lot of things he passed away in 2015 he was a lot of things he was an architect he you know he had an architect degree he was an installation artist and a performative artist so he did he did a lot of things and the crazy stuff that we're going to talk about and the things that maybe, I don't know, this wasn't taught to me in like an art class or anything. He did some self-harming acts or just self-deprecating acts that really <sighs> baffled people, but also engaged them so well, I mean, obviously you're watching, you're experiencing somebody getting hurt or being very uh, candid, aloud and embarrassing, or just, you just see something odd. You just see something odd and it's Chris doing an art piece. Like the guy, the guy, I, I have a hard time with his artwork. I have a hard time because I don't always understand where he's coming from or what he's trying to get at. I don't always understand it, but I respect it and I'm intrigued by it. And it's art, so at the end of the day, it needs to be experienced and, um, you know, 
for the for all the world to see if that's what the artist wants of course back to chris <laughs> so he grows up he goes to college and he is pursuing architecture but he kind of fizzles out of that because i'm guessing that his intrigues lied elsewhere in his younger age he picked up photography and film and there are also a lot of, attached to the filmings of some of his pieces or a lot of kind of autobiographical i don't know how a lot of anecdotes from him he um it seems like he's very confident and comfortable with talking to a camera and explaining his art and and producing art pieces through film. So in his younger years, he played with that and then he went to college for architecture, but that kind of fizzled out because he wanted to do something else. So he leaves that school that he was at and he pursues sculpting, but interesting sculpting. These installations and many of them in this early period of his work, most of them, he was the piece. He was the sculpted piece. Um, and it was, he was doing acts, harmful acts, self-harming acts at that, um, in a lot of these pieces. And we're gonna get into them because I don't think there's any other artists like that. If you, if you know, please link it somewhere where I can find out. Um, any artist that does that or has done that. So let's get into Chris and his performative pieces. So in the period of his performance art, it was the 70s, late 60s and 70s is when he is most like in the spotlight, the talk of the town for his performative pieces. Um, and he starts off with a piece that got him um i pretty much i'm pretty sure it got him an a the piece was done for his graduate degree and it was a five day locker and it was called five day locker piece and in this piece he it was in a he himself he put himself into one of those long slender lockers you know that you have at high school and stuff um for five days without food or water So he did graduate, so I'm sure it did him some some good. So he graduates and he gets married and he starts doing more extreme performative pieces where he is like the, uh, the prop, the protagonist in his pieces. He starts doing things um, like convincing his wife uh, to nail him to the front, I think it was the front, of a Volkswagen. It nails in his hands to the Volkswagen. And I think all that really happened was that um, maybe she or another person, his wife, uh, got in the car, pulled it out of the driveway, revved the engine, and then put it back into the driveway. And that was it. Or there was the piece called Disappearing, where he went away for three days without telling anybody where he was going or that he was leaving. Just disappeared. Came back three days later. And there is the one uh, piece in particular that is that he is most known for. And that piece is called Shoot. And I cannot believe I did not know about this. I'm kind of like kicking myself for not knowing this but it was uh, around the time of the vietnam war he was young he was in his 20s he rented out a like a little small gallery space and he got a friend of his they got a revolver and his friend stood on one end of the room and chris sit, stood on the other and on chris's mark on the count the friend shoots shoot and it lands in Chris's, I believe, his left arm. I think it went, it didn't hurt anything vital, but he did get shot. So a lot of, there's a lot of um, 
talk about that piece because one, it was done in such a volatile time. And two, it's so alarming. You, who, I'm guessing, I'm just trying to put myself into the shoes of somebody and an art lover and art critic in that time and Chris Burden does something like that. What am I thinking? And and I know the climate. Like, am I putting two and two together? Or am I just thinking this guy's crazy or what? And, it, you know, it is said and a lot of people theorize about this piece and write about it and talk about it. And is it a, a trying to resensitize people of, you know, a society? Even back then, there was so much violence going on. Just like today, most people are kind of desensitized to violence like that. But to see common day in just a regular whatever environment, someone actually got hurt. They could have died if things went awry. Like Chris. And that was at 20s, in his 20s. That, that's not even the later stuff that he's done. And I've got notes. Chris in his antics and his pieces, I don't want to call them antics like they're not serious pieces, which brings me to this point. He started gaining a lot of um, talk, a big audience. People were singing his cra praises. People were talking about him like they were talking about Picasso, like they were talking about Rothko or Pollock or, you know, the greats of that time and, and before. And so this may or I, this is what I'm getting, but this may not have given him the reaction that he wanted because it I read it was quoted of him saying that his pieces became more and more extreme as he felt the need to be taken more seriously in the art community which is very interesting to me. So yes, I'm sure these pieces had a great deal of significance, but there was an underlying reasoning for these pieces, these extreme ones, because maybe he was fighting some kind of like, we all know how the art community can be, you know? No, no, these are only my projections, who knows? So he gets crazier. <laughs> so there's the piece where um, Chris lies in bed in, in a studio space, in like a gallery space, lies in bed for like 20 days, something extreme like that, 20 days. And it, you know, he, of course, just like the disappearing or the whatever, he did not tell anybody. So they didn't know if he had food or anything, but there were a few um, gallery workers who started bringing him food and water because he wasn't speaking. He was just lying in a bed. I think he had maybe just some puzzles or something with him. Um, and that was the piece, which is such a sad, that sounds so sad, doesn't it? I feel, I feel like if I went to um, a gallery and I, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And um, I saw this man just lying in the, in a bed. And I'm like asking around, like, what is this? And they're like, he's been there for days. And I'm like, what? There's another piece. So Chris decides to get a tarp and lay out on a street in LA and lay under the tarp. That was it. To lay under the tarp. And that was the piece. And he actually became a little bit upset after the cops came and disrupted him in his piece because someone saw him. They were probably like walking their dog or something, I imagine. And they see a body under a tarp in the middle of the street. And it's LA. Like, I would have called the cops too. Maybe, I don't know. That's wild. And he was a little bit, you know, upset. He was a little bit peeved. He's like, wow, I was totally like, not like I was in the middle of anything, guys. Thanks. Appreciate it. It seems as though maybe Chris has like, I don't want to say, 
Maybe he had like ulterior motives to his art. There's so many of these pieces that after reading about them, they seem really kind of personal, honestly. There's one piece where um, he's sitting in front of a television and he has these pair of pants on and these pair of pants have a story. These pair of pants aren't just regular pants. These pants had been passed around by Burden's friends he had told them, okay, you wear the pants, you wear the pants, you wear the pants, pass them to the lawn, to a person, give them back to me. He finally gets the pants back just in time to do the piece. How lucky. In this piece, he's sitting, you know, he's sitting and watching this television and then he turns it off and then he gets up. He takes off the pants. He lights the pants on fire, throws them on the ground, and then extinguishes the pants by rolling in them in the pants that are currently on fire. So, putting it out. What? And that feels, feels kind of personal, I'm just saying. In his late 20s, his 30s, Chris kind of slows down a little bit, a little bit. And you know, as much as, you know, Chris can do, I suppose. Still very active, still creating art, always, of course. But he becomes a professor at UCLA, which is super cool, I think. I don't know what I would do if I walked in and my teacher was Chris Burden and he just, I don't know, I feel like he would put me on to some crazy stuff. That would be a class. I want to know if there is like a Reddit thread or something of people who had him as a teacher. I mean, they would be, you know, older than I am, but older people know how to use Reddit, right? So he's teaching at this school, but he's also still doing smaller, less, you know, big gallery performance art, but he's still making statements. Everywhere he goes, he's making statements. And so it was asked of him, you know, wow, Chris, you've done everything, it seems like. You've, you've done the five-day locker piece. You've shot yourself. You've what 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 else can you do what else is there are you gonna kill yourself next and he says no no not intentionally around this period um he was asked to go on to a talk show a live talk show that you know premieres on prime time television you know what i mean and i believe and i believe i read this correctly but the host of the show, he was acquainted with. He had known, maybe around, they had the same circles or something. So she asks him to come on to her show and he's like, okay, I'll come on to your show. He goes, there are no film, there's no film record of this, of this specific moment of that interview. I, you can find, I'm pretty sure you can find different snippets of this interview and pictures, but you cannot find this exact, what I'm about to tell you. You cannot find that on film because the only copy of it was destroyed by Chris himself. Chris goes on to this show and she's, you know, it's conducting as normal. She's asking all of the, all the questions. So yeah, what are you doing now? Are you doing any crazy stunts now? What? What made you, you know, want to become an artist? Like, what got you into it? And then he just gets up from his chair. He walks over to the host, takes out a knife out of his pocket, grabs her and puts the knife to her neck. And he says, this better go live. Something to that effect. Keep this live and if you don't, like, or else, you know what I mean? Or else, okay. And after about like 15 seconds, I'm sure it felt much, much longer than that. I know I would be feeling like that was an eternity if that was me. He lets her go and just puts the knife back in his pocket, um, sits down and he's like, yeah, um, so like architecture is really awesome. I think that that really sparked my, you know, drive for art. 
So there's a rumor out there that, and this may be true, this totally may be true, it totally may not be, but that the the host knew that he was going to do something. He may not, she may not have known what he was, that he was going to do that, um, but she probably was aware that he was going to do something because I believe that they had asked him to do a piece on live television, but they didn't know what the piece was. So if, if that, I guess, is tame Chris, that's not crucifying himself or um, lying between two buckets of water that have electrical cords in them, um, or, you know, it's not as wild as that as his, you know, 20s, but definitely still pretty wild, I would say. So that brings me to like my question of, is he, is he creating art with a purpose or is he just kind of unhinged and like really radical and what is it, you know? Because, and I, and I like to believe, I like to believe a lot of things. <laughs> I like to believe that for one, not every uh, art piece needs to have a purpose. It could just be just to gain a um, reaction or the simple act of just doing it. It could be a lot of things. It could be a lot of things. Um, so that's kind of like my question that I'm sitting with is, is he, was he just crazy or was he really trying to um say something was he trying to desensitize us you know as humans to violence to to something happening so quickly so fast without because that seems like a theme of like a lot of what he was doing is like things were happening so fast and these are just passerbys. You, you almost would want to do something, but you can't. I mean, it's an art piece. It's not real, but like, is that, is that it? It could be so many things or it could just be a, a madman. <laughs> <laughs> he also did kind of like some self deprecating I don't know what the word is, or just kind of okay. He had an affair and felt really, really bad about it. And so, in the middle of an audience, he confesses his affair, and his wife is there, and she had no idea. She she didn't have no idea that he was having an affair. He also did not know that he was going to say that in front of probably over 50 something people i'm guessing if it was an audience i'm guessing it was more than that so but it was a piece it was he, he said it was a piece but it was also the truth it's very personal chris it's very personal it may or may not be the case but drugs especially during his 70s 80s late 70s 80s career might have been abused by chris it is said by his friends um, but these aren't, and these are documented, but they're not the most reliable. So take this for what you will. Um, there may have been some drug use in his life and that may have fueled things, but I don't think that that should change anyone's mind about the type of art that he was doing because it was very thought out, very meticulous. Um, and if you watch, there are some videographies of him online, especially on YouTube. There is a documentary about him as well that you can find. Um, but he was very good about documenting things and making his own kind of little documentaries about his pieces during his younger times, um, which are very, very interesting because you kind of, you get to see him and some of these and you get to look into his eyes, you know, through the screen, get personal with him. You know, you get personal with Chris in some of these videographies. And it made me feel like I was watching like a friend who a very, very intelligent, articulate, artsy friend that had a lot going on in here, nothing wrong, but like had a lot of wheels turning and a lot of emotion too, but expressed it in 
violently through art. And he's got this like timid voice um, and it's it's kind of startling to watch, but really cool, really interesting. He seemed like a really interesting dude, really interesting. So there are a few rumors about um, Chris and his erratic behavior, you know, personally and performatively. But so after, you know, he confessed to cheating on his wife in front of everybody. They did stay together for a little bit, but eventually she left him. He did remarry, but during that divorce, he is quoted with saying that he swears that he is going to follow her to wherever she's going in like a white van, and he's gonna park it up where she's at and just stand out there and yell nasty, nasty things. I don't think he did it. There's no record of him doing it or anybody saying that he actually did it, but he said he would. There's a rumor that one night he smashed everything in the house. And then after that, he proceeded to shoot every single gun he had in the house. And his neighbor was terrified and hiding under things because stray bullets are a thing. So, Chris. So he's getting older, he is in his 40s now, and that is really when he retires the performative art. And his art takes a whole new form. And I love it so much. So he starts doing these massive sculpting pieces. I'm talking huge. There's one called the Medusa head or the Medusa. And it's a huge just conglomerate of I don't even know what it's made out of. It's, you should go look it up. Chris Burden, Medusa. You'll see it. It's wild. It's as big as a, a huge, large man. So he's doing pieces like that. He did, um, he made a model of a car. He, he did a sculpting of a flying uh, steamroller. He did a 12 foot, um, iron wheel okay also something that is super super cool and is nostalgic he made a giant gigantic race car track but it was more than a race car track he had like it was like a little freeway system he made a whole interstate it was so cool with hundreds of little race cars and it was massive. You could walk around the whole thing. So I really appreciate his variety. The fact that he can create so many things. It was amazing um, and definitely something to be noted. So a super fun thing that Chris did that I had no idea that I have seen pictures of another thing that I cannot believe I did not know is that in 2008 he collected a bunch of light posts and these light posts were put right in front of the LA County Art Museum, Museum of Art, and it is one of the most popular places to go take a photo in LA. Maybe even the country. Maybe even the country. Um, and he made that. And I'm sure you maybe have seen it. So you've seen like some cool photos of people like in front of like a bunch of these column like white posts and they're like taking cute pictures or whatever. That's Chris Burden. Chris Burden made that. Go look it up. It's so cool. Um, so yeah. Chris did a lot of awesome, freaky, shocking, crazy, beautiful, brilliant things. And I think that he should definitely be talked about more. If you want to learn more about him, there is definitely a documentary and countless um, videographies about Chris and his work. And I highly suggest you check that out because he is, he was something else he was something special so wow man the 70s got everybody like everybody it's fine it's fine i'm not like upset about like being born in the year i was born or anything it's fine 
Thank you for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, you are a real one and I appreciate you so, so much. You can find Art Hub on every single thing. Links are everywhere. Follow us on everything. And this is the look. <laughs>